Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. You can say this video is sponsored because I got a box of Mission Gold 34 color set from Magello, straight from Korea. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I got it, what do I think of it, and as a bonus, I'm going to share a painting process of this painting using only Mission Gold paint. Let's dive into it. So since the beginning of this year, I've been contacting different paint manufacturers. I want to see if any of them want to work with me by having me test out some of their paint. I contacted Daniel Smith, Holbein, and Magello. Last month, E.O. Sun from the overseas sales department from Magello replied me. She told me she would send some colors to test and ask what color do I use. I replied to her and after like two weeks, I got a huge box from them and I was floored by what they sent me. Let's go over what they sent me. First, let's look at the 34 color set. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's like getting a nice box of chocolate. Open up the box, there's a nice tissue paper cover. Underneath, there is a small pamphlet introduced their brand and paint. And another pamphlet giving you a list of their color with some additional information like the light fastness, transparency, and staining. 34 colors are probably more than I need, but hopefully I will get to experience with them all. Aside from the 34 color set, they also sent me 9 more tubes of paint. Because I told them the color I have in my palette and some of the colors I listed weren't in the 34 color set, so they gave me some more paint which is really generous of them. They include four pages of handmade color chart. They are basically swatches with a small drop of paint on it. So I can just add water and paint out the swatch. Honestly, this was what I was expecting from Magello. They could have just sent me this and called it a day and I would have no complaints. So the fact that they include so much more stuff in the package was just overwhelmingly generous. Magello also gave me this collapsible water bucket. I'm perfectly fine with my organic yogurt container, so I probably won't use this water bucket just yet. Plus, one thing I like about my yogurt container as water bucket is that it is white, so I can easily tell if the water gets too dirty. This collapsible water bucket is black, so it can be a bit hard to tell if the water is getting too muddy. However, I do see the benefit of having this for maybe traveling and plein air. Now, I've mentioned many times before that I am not a huge color theory guy. I just see them as warm and cool and different shades of gray. So the first thing that came to my mind when I saw a box of 34 colors and 4 pages of color chart is confusion. But because I don't want to waste what they sent me, I decided to spend an hour doing these swatches. Each swatch already has a tiny bit of paint on it, so all I needed to do is to dissolve the paint with a clean wet brush. And immediately what I noticed is how easy it was to revive the dry paint. Most of the color melts very easily with a little fiddle of a wet brush. The colors are very vibrant, intense, and consistent. Now there are some technical aspects of the paint like the light fastness, transparency, and staining. I'm not going to go over with them because you can find a complete chart on Magello's website. And there are already quite a bit of video about them. I will put the link down below. This video is mostly about my experience and my real life application with the paint. What I discovered is that there are some colors that I use in my palette that Mission doesn't have, such as cadmium colors like cadmium red, orange, and yellow. Well, the cadmium is very toxic anyway, so I'm happy to find an alternative for them. I also have a very warm yellow color in my regular palette called Hanson Yellow Deep, and that is also something Mission doesn't have. Another thing I found out is that there are some colors with the same name, but that look very different between Mission and Daniel Smith. 
like cobalt turquoise, a color that I use a lot to mix my greens. The cobalt turquoise from Mission looks more like cobalt turquoise teal from Daniel Smith, while the cobalt green from Mission looks more like the cobalt turquoise I'm familiar with from Daniel Smith. And the cerulean blue from Mission also look very different from Daniel Smith and other brands. It is a very beautiful blue, but I think their cobalt cerulean blue looks more similar to the cerulean blue I'm used to. So I definitely recommend you to do some research on your end if you decided to switch brand. I ordered a new palette from Amazon because I want to do a painting only with Mission Gold paint. After the color palette is here, I started to squeeze into the paint colors that I normally use for my painting. But since there are colors with different name but the same look, I squeeze some of those colors down below so I can access them as well. So I decided to paint a portrait painting of my friend Miyuki, who is also one of my students from last year. This is a beautiful photo of her during her wedding in Japan. I love the red vibrant color of her kimono, so I thought it would be a great subject to test out my new paint set. And my first attempt was, well, unsuccessful. What happened was I painted just like how I would when I use my regular Daniel Smith set. I do what I thought was a light transparent first wash on her face, and it turned out to be way too saturated and intense. As I mentioned, Mission Gold is very intense and vibrant. While it is a good thing, I wasn't used to it, so I was kind of heavy handed on it. And it is not me blaming the new paint at all, it was the lack of my experience with the Mission Gold paint. But also, I don't think I did a good job with the drawing and planning, so the first attempt ended with some frustration. The next day, I get myself back together and start over. I did a much better drawing, and this time I was much more soft-handed on it. I didn't do an overall wash on the face, I go straight to the value, and I keep them light. The result is a much more transparent skin tone. What I did notice with my experience is that Mission Go paint feels very pure. What you put down is mostly what you get. The value and the color don't shift much when it's dry. It flows a little bit less when I do wet on wet. I usually like to pre-wet some area with the water and put some drier mixture on it. When I use Mission Go paint, the paint doesn't spread out as much as Daniel Smith. Also, I wasn't quite sure, but I feel the earth tone color from Mission Go feels more intense. When it comes to earth tone like yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and colors like that, I usually expect them to be a bit more muted and dull. But the ones from Mission feels very vibrant and intense. To a point, I feel it looks a bit cartoonish, if you know what I mean. However, that's not saying it's bad, it's just different. And I need to mix more color into it to dull it down or in other words, stabilize it. In terms of this painting, because the lighting of the photo is this soft overcast day, the lighting contrast is not obvious at all. So I need to really think about the structure of the face and use different value to define them. If you look closely, you can still spot the value changes on the face, the eye socket, Areas under her nose, her cheek, her chin, and her mouth are all in dark. So by grouping those values together, it makes it easier to define her face. I also paint some subtle shapes across her cheek and jawline. They are not really visible in photo, but hinting them with painting shows your understanding of the facial structure. So in this case, your painting look more believable by painting what you know, not just simply what you see. You also see me adding some cerulean blue and cobalt blue in a few areas. These cool colors will be able to give some balance to the painting 
since most of the color in this painting are warm colors, especially her kimono. Her kimono is bright red. With the vibrancy and the intensity of the mission go paint, painting her kimono is an absolute joy. If I get the intensity right, I really have to go back to make it more saturated because the color doesn't wash out after dry. And the color is, in my opinion, more vibrant than my Daniel Smith paint. The thing about painting a red object is that you need to understand the property of the color. The brightest red is pretty much your straight out of tube red. If you add white to it, it turns out pink. And if you add yellow to it, it turns orange. So in order to make the color red appear to be lighter, you work on the darker red. So in this case, the fold and the wrinkle of her kimono are the darker red. So I mix the permanent red deep with colors like burnt umber, burnt sienna, lizard and crimson, or even some blue colors. Depends on the warm and cool. The darker red will make the pure red pop and the light will read. The kimono has quite a bit of graphical patterns on it. For my sanity, I am not going to try to copy everything one to one, but these graphics are excellent to reinforce the form of the clothes, especially the white crane graphic that is on her collar. Remember, everything you paint should help telling the story and reinforce the form. Lastly, I want to keep the background light, so just some subtle blue color. While I was doing the background, I also want to create this red light bloom from the flowers on her head. So I re-wet the area and put some red in it. I like the result of this one a lot better, especially her face. It definitely has more translucency and the value control. So this definitely been a very interesting experience. I had a great time using my new paint set and will definitely recommend Mission Gold Paint. They are good quality paint with amazing intensity. There are a few things that you do want to know first and I have mentioned in this video. So it doesn't flow as far as some other paint brand. Some colors with same name look different than other brand. And the earth tone is not as muted as you would expect it. But again, like I mentioned in my other video, if you have a good vision for your painting, it's just a matter of getting used to the paint and achieve your vision. With the paint I have, I probably have mixed match my Daniel Smith's color was Mission Gold, so some vibrant color like red, orange, and yellow were probably better off using Mission Gold. And some earth tones like Burn Umber, Burn Sienna, or Yellow Ochre, I will probably use Daniel Smith's color for those since they are a bit more neutral and muted like how I expected them to be. So have you tried the Mission Gold paint before and how's your experience if you did? Drop me a comment below, I would love to hear from you. If you're new here, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you will get a notification whenever I'm doing a live demo. Also, be sure to sign up to get my free watercolor guide. If you missed my last painting video, you can click here to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I will see you again very soon.